Hey guys, welcome to another episode of NetSec Now. So today, uh, what I want to go over is setting up DVWA, otherwise known as Damn Vulnerable Web App. And the good thing about that is it gives you a lab on, on your local computer without having to set up, you know, virtual machines and things like that uh, to be able to work on web penetration testing. And so uh, the next few videos we're going to do here are going to discuss some of the uh, topics of, of, you know, web penetration testing using DVWA. So moving forward, uh, installing DVWA, damn vulnerable web app, things you're going to need, Kali Linux 1.0 or 1.x to 2.0, uh, which is what we're running here is the newest Kali Linux 2.0, uh, but any Unix Linux operating system will do. Uh, so the next thing you're going to need there is the actual software itself. Uh, and then of course you can go to this link here in the slide. I will also have a link down in the description uh, as well. You also need Apache web server, which in our case is, is actually uh, pre-installed with Kali Linux. Uh, MySQL server, same thing, that's your database backend server. Uh, a web browser, obviously every operating system pretty much has a web browser of some type. Uh, and then your favorite text editor, and of course guys, if you've been following along, you know that mine is Vim, or VI for short. Let's go ahead and get out of our presentation here, and we'll minimize that. Okay, so the very first thing you're going to need to do, obviously besides having Kali Linux, uh, which hopefully you're, you're on right now and is why you're watching these videos, uh, is you're going to need to go out to the link, and again it'll be down in the description, it's dvwa.co.uk, scroll down to the bottom here and click on the download link. And of course, it's going to open up a download. Uh, you can open it with the zip, unzip program that's in your operating system, or you could save the file. Now, again, of course, I always save my files and I do everything the long way because I like to see what I'm actually doing on my my operating system. And that's a good way to approach a security standpoint: is slow and steady, uh, so you're not you know creating any kind of chaos for yourself that's unneeded. So I've already went ahead and uh, taken the liberty to download that. And what I would suggest you do now at this point, if you didn't use the GUI unzip program, is to go to your downloads directory or wherever you may have saved it uh, in your machine on your terminal. So of course I'm just going to ls and you can see here that I have DVWA, uh, DVWA zip. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with unzipping things in a terminal, but I'm going to show you how it's real, real easy. The command simply is unzip and then whatever um, you know, folder, zip folder, you're gonna, uh, you know, decompress here. And just hit enter. And of course, if we ls, you'll see that we have the dvwa, uh, which is now a directory. Okay, so the very next thing we're gonna need to do uh, before we get any further is start some necessary services. Now, if you guys uh, have, have looked, you'll see that I am not root on this machine. Now I'm trying to approach this from a different point of view. I'm trying to approach this as if you guys were operating in your own environments. And so um, I've added myself to the sudoers root group, uh, which allows me to issue most commands and start services and updates and things like that as if I were root, but having the security of just being a regular account, not a super user root account. Okay, so very simply, uh, what we're gonna wind up doing now is the sudo command now of course you can omit this if you are running as root um, which I may make some mistakes here uh, not typing sudo because I forget I'm used to operating as root uh, as we have in all of our other videos but again I'm trying a different approach so sudo and the uh, web server software that um, we're going to be using here is Apache and like I said earlier it's already installed on Kali Linux, but Kali Linux does not start back-end services that are not needed, such as Apache, MySQL, Pro, Postgres SQL, and things like that for security purposes. So keep in mind that every time you start these services after you're done pen testing or using whatever applications rely on them, it's a good practice to shut them down. So uh, we're going to start up the Apache web server, so it's sudo service, because we want to start a service. The service that we're going to start is Apache 2, and I use autocomplete if I can. And then we're just going to say start. And I have to enter in my sudoers password to authenticate. 
and there we are okay so if you actually went ahead and did uh, sudo service apache status you can see whether or not it's running and of course it says active running right here so um, that's pretty good so let's just go ahead and clear out the screen now most services that you can start via the command line here you can issue that status command to see if they are in fact up and running uh, things like that so moving forward um, if we went back here to what we needed um, we've downloaded the DVWA we've unzipped it we started our Apache web server now we're gonna go ahead and start the MySQL server now here's the thing guys when you went ahead and downloaded Kali Linux 2.0 um, if you did it from scratch or whether you were upgrading at some point you should have been asked to set a root MySQL password and the reason for that number one from a security standpoint is always good to have a password on all of your services especially database services like MySQL um, but DVWA requires you to be able to connect to a database and set up its database so you need the root password okay um, so it's important to have remembered that if you did not remember that or if you just hit enter and bypassed it or whatever uh, you have to set one and and or if you forgot it you'd have to reset it which there's some information out there on Google I might actually just do a video to you know put another video out there for you guys to view uh, on my SQL password resets that being said uh, assuming you have all that done let's move forward and it's the same idea sudo and then service MySQL start oops and then of course we're going to issue the status command just because and here we are MySQL service is active and running and it tells you since 11 minutes ago actually it was messing around so I had this thing running for for a few minutes MySQL uh, alright let's go ahead and clear out the screen here so looking at our list the very next thing we're going to need is a web browser of course um, but before we jump ahead to that we need to do some some moving around so default uh, at least on Kali Linux 2.0 the operating directory or the the server root directory for your web pages in Apache is forward slash var forward slash www and in this case it's forward slash var forward slash www forward slash HTML and I'm going to show you quickly what that looks like so we did an ls var www you'd see there's an HTML directory there and then just to take that a step forward if we did HTML we'd see that there's an index which is obviously the default uh, document type to go to a web page so now if you want to test that Apache is actually working and serving up web pages very simply open up a web browser here and just go and type in localhost and you can see this is the default Debian based Apache 2 page for that package uh, and that just tells us that Apache is working and of course it gives you some config options and feel free to read this uh, at any time but it's basically what we just went over so I'm going to go ahead and close that out okay so again like I said we have to do some moving of files if you remember just a few minutes ago here we actually unzipped DVWA and now we need to move that whole directory structure over to forward slash var forward slash www forward slash html to serve it up to the world or us if you will uh, when we go to the web page so that being said there's also this is all capitals it's got a dash and it's got some decimal points and numbers it's kinda of hard to remember when you're trying to type that into the browser right so what we're gonna do is move it and rename it at the same time so MV is the move command um, if you're not familiar with that you can always do man and then whatever command and it'll give you the actual manual page for it so MV capital DV autocomplete I want to move this entire directory structure over to var www html dv wa lowercase so it's easy to remember easy to type right go ahead and hit enter oops I have to sudo and like I said I uh, sometimes forget that there we go ls if I went to let's see do that now you can see there's a dvwa directory so let's go ahead and fire up your web browser again let's just type in let's go to localhost and now forward slash dvwa 
And you can see right away we're greeted with an error message here. It says, unable to connect to the database, MySQL error. Click here to set up a database. So um, database setup, and it's just telling you what to do. It also tells you that you have to edit this file inside the DVWA directory to be able to put in your root user and password for the MySQL database. Again, this is why I said earlier that it's important to remember that password. So even if you just said, well, you know, it should be good, I mean, whatever, and you click create, it's going to give you this error message down here, could not connect to the database. Well, obviously it cannot connect because it has no user credentials to connect and either modify, pull down, create databases and tables and things of that nature. So being said, this is where your text editor comes in. So um, I'm just going to go over there and navigate to var whtml and then dvwa you can see if I ls in here there's the config directory that uh, we were being talked about in here which is right config directory and then the file name down here so let's just cd into the config directory issue ls again and sure enough guys here's the uh, file that we need to edit so I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, of course, you can use your favorite uh, text editor, whether it be Nano, you could use a GUI thing like uh, LeafPad or something, or uh, Vim, which is what I'm going to use, VI. Uh, I'm just used to VI because I've been using it for eons, it seems like, um, ever since I started. So that being said, that's what I'm comfortable with. Use what you're comfortable with, and you should be good. Okay, so let's open it up here. You can see there's a bunch of different variables variables in here, guys. Uh, what we're going to focus on is what's called database variables up here. And as you scroll down, you're going to see the variable dollar sign underscore DVWA. And what you can leave the rest of this stuff alone, um, unless of course you're doing an advanced setup and it's on a different server remotely somewhere else different usernames passwords but for for our demonstration here we're just going to leave everything the same but the only thing we're going to change is the password field here now password the way it was that's actually the default um, for DVWA but that's not the default for your MySQL um, server so mine just so happens to be and this is temporary of course I, I changed it but um, insert that's sick. Now, whoops. And then just um, save the changes to this file that you edited, guys. You don't need to restart any services after this. Just save the changes uh, and you should be good to go. So now, if we went here and just refreshed the page and we clicked Create Reset Database, you're going to see that it actually does some work now and it says down here database has been created user table was created data inserted so on and so forth setup successful great news okay so moving forward um, anytime if you tried to click anything else here it's gonna bring you to a login page so let's just go ahead and click brute force now there's a default login here and if I remember correctly it's admin and password yes okay so the default username and password is admin password I know so very secure right um, but that's the whole point here is we're we're learning so um, basically I'm gonna show you a couple small configurations in here and since you guys are just starting out I recommend that we change the security level on DVWA to low so this way it's easier to to exploit it to penetrate it and to figure out how all of this works now Again, when we go through this stuff, we're going to be using different various, you know, uh, web vulnerability scanners and fuzzers and all sorts of cool stuff. And we'll run through a tool list of that. So to change the um, security level, as you can see down here, is set to high. Uh, what you do is go to, let's see, where is it here? DVWA security. And then, of course, you can set this down to low and then as we progress to being better, we'd set it up to medium. And as we're at like super pro level here, we'd set it to high and try to penetrate it uh, as well. Now, guys, there's all sorts of guides out there on, you know, DVWA pen testing, uh, you know, practice exam examples and labs and so on and so forth. But, I mean, really, that's what we're going to actually go through the video series about. We're going to show you start to finish on how, you know, to uh, find these vulnerabilities, how to 
you know, check to see if they're actually there, and then again, how to exploit it, and then take it from there. Okay, so um, I'm just going to go ahead and set this to low for the time being. Hit submit, and it should be changed to low now. If you scroll down back at the bottom here, you'll see security level set to low. Uh, we do not have a PHP IDS set up on here. Um, oops, but you could set it up if you wanted to. Uh, you could you could enable it right by here so maybe we will get to that uh, you know when we do some advanced IDS evasion techniques or something like that uh, who knows how far if we get that far yet but um, certainly uh, just to run down the menu here brute force obviously you'd use something like you know Hydra to try to brute force into a login um, command execution now of course guys in some of the other videos we went through some of these things like SQL injection and file inclusion and stuff like that but this time we're really gonna dive into it start to finish we're gonna cover it on every level um, command execution and that's pretty much like you know not sanitizing the data that the users entering after the predetermined variable is entered so for instance just to give you an idea of what we're gonna do here we're just gonna enter an IP address of 192.168.1.1 one for instance okay and then after that I'm gonna enter an and 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 then I'm gonna just do ls arl var www html now if you hit submit you're gonna go ahead and see that it did output to the screen and it sure enough it was a, a free pinger script uh, it did ping the IP address that we put in so it sanitized the data that we put in but it didn't trim it it didn't cut it it didn't block anything else so you can see that right after that's completed here okay um, it went ahead and issued our command after the and and statement so of course you can see that uh, it listed the contents of var www html which of course is what we just did before so you can see that that's worked um, that's just giving you an idea of command execution uh, poor sanitization uh, then you got CRS uh, CSRF um, cross-site forgery request forgeries uh, you can do token stealing there's a ton of stuff you can do in here um, insecure caption now the, the caveat to that is you have to apply for a recaptcha API key um, from Google uh, which is not hard to do obviously just go ahead and do that um, and then it'll, it'll tell you how to make that happen there uh, but we'll get to that guys and we'll, we'll walk through that step I'm actually not gonna mess with this until we do the next video um, file inclusions which we did have a video on local file inclusions there's two different types there's a local file inclusion and there's a remote file inclusion uh, this one here looks like it's um, you know maybe giving you a remote file. I don't know we'll go through it um, yeah okay so it's remote file inclusion uh, there's one for SQL injections and then there's one for blind SQL injections um, we've we've made a couple of videos on that and I had actually a, a comment uh, as a question the other day on somebody asking me if they why their DVWA um, installation here for the SQL injection wasn't vulnerable and either one it's not going to be vulnerable because the security level and a lot of people don't set that to low to get familiar with it or two uh, he's not simply entering entering in the actual um, the the real or the right way to check for a SQL injection uh, so I explained that to him in that comment uh, and we'll go over that in, in pretty good detail here guys uh, blind SQL, and SQL injection then we have uh, file upload vulnerabilities which used to be really huge back in the day with like um, image sharing sites like uh, image hosting sites um, clip art sites things like that where you can upload an image uh, and we used to trick the encoding to say that it was an image but realistically it was actually like a C99 shell as a payload or something uh, to root their box so being said I don't know if it's very very rampant these days anymore to be honest with you um, but it's it's worth learning about as well uh, and then you got cross-site scripting attacks so you got a reflected attack and then of course a stored attack um, those are pretty cool I'll show you how to get into all that and then of course guys there's there's much more to you know vulnerability testing on the web front end anyway um, you know there's a lot of custom things you can do there's a whole lot of scripts and tools inside Kali Linux to be able to take it steps further or at least get more information in some cases 
So um, that pretty much wraps it up. I guess we're going to go ahead and start with a brute force video on the next one. So uh, I'll give you guys some time to get your DVWA lab set up. I'll get you some time to uh, figure out how to get your SQL Server started uh, and then your Apache Server started. And like I said, guys, whenever you're done messing around, always shut down the services that you manually start. Very, very important, especially if your box has access to the internet, especially if your box is running under root. Um, very, very big no-no. <laughs> okay, so um, so some, some news for me. Uh, I've been shocked by the overwhelming response of... Um, you guys, you know, in the comments and via Twitter and the YouTube videos and all that good stuff about my uh, return here back to the project and back to the industry as a whole. Um, you guys are really awesome. I mean, a lot of the comments really, really made my day and it made me realize that what I'm doing is actually worth it. People are actually really learning from this. Um, they're grasping it, they're getting it, and they're actually going out into, wor into the world to do good things with the information that they, they take from me. Um, and I really appreciate that. That's 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 really good to know. And I and I welcome every feedback, whether it be good, bad, and different. It doesn't matter, guys. I don't judge. I don't get angry. Um, let me know how I'm doing as a teacher, uh, and I will improve upon the things that maybe I'm not doing so good at. And I appreciate that. Um, we're approaching 19,000 subscribers right now to the YouTube channel, and quite honestly, I haven't made a video in almost a year and a half, and that's amazing. That that's it blows my mind um, and, and it again just confirms that I'm doing something right whatever that may be uh, to make you know you guys understand and learn and, and it seems like um, it's working really well so kudos to to everybody involved uh, I really appreciate all that you guys are really really awesome um, I had some issues I've tried to make this video earlier in the week uh, I've had some issues with this laptop that I've like pieced together here um, my AC adapter, unfortunately, was creating this horrible um, ground loop feedback into the USB headset, uh, which was it was annoying to me. Maybe not so much to you guys. I'm sure most of the videos on YouTube for this kind of stuff or any kind of stuff really doesn't even have any voiceover talking. And if it if it is, it's some Indian guy or something, you know. Um, so it probably doesn't matter. But uh, I like my stuff to be as perfect as possible. So I went out and got a new AC adapter. I, I narrowed it down to the AC adapter, so hopefully now this video uh, wouldn't have that annoying humming in the background. Um, that also being said, let's see. Anything else new? Anything else new? No, just um, been dealing with that. I, I will tell you that record my desktop in Kali Linux, um, especially the GTK you know, uh, GUI front end for it, is a piece of crap. Um, I've had nothing but problems. You know how I make longer videos. I've had nothing but issues. It cut off my voice after 13 or 14, 16 minutes. Some, some of them were different times, but it just stopped recording the voice for whatever stupid reason. So right now, I'm actually using Kazam, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then I've downloaded and installed some video editing software. Uh, OpenShot Video Editor is pretty cool for, like, you know, basic quick stuff. Uh, KDEN Live is really where it's going to be at, so it's going to take me some time to produce this video because I'm still learning that as well. But I'm not going to take up too much more of your time, guys. Again, really, really, really super appreciate all the, the positive feedback, neutral, indifferent, whatever. Um, I really appreciate that we have 19,000 subscribers again, guys. I mean, I'm just I'm floored by the whole thing. Um, so that's really, really cool. Um, stay tuned for the next video. Like, subscribe, and share. Check me out on uh, Twitter as well. Um, I'll have all the links in the descriptions below. And then uh, don't forget to keep in and uh, checking in on the blog. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Have fun. Thanks for watching.